This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. May 24th through the 30th, Doctrine and Covenants, sections 58 and 59, anxiously engaged in a good cause. President Alan H. Oaks taught, quote, The scriptures will help us resolve all of our personal questions because by reading them we invite and qualify ourselves for the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, which will guide us into all truth. End quote. In David A. Edwards, Are My Answers in There? New Era, May 2016. When the elders of the church first saw the site of the city of Zion, Independence, Missouri, it was not what they expected. Some thought they would find a thriving, industrious community with a strong group of saints. Instead, they found a sparsely populated outpost lacking the civilization they were used to and inhabited by rough frontier settlers rather than saints. It turned out that the Lord wasn't asking them just to come to Zion. He wanted them to build it. When our expectations do not match reality, we can remember what the Lord told the saints in 1831. Quote, Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes, for the present time, the design of your God, and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation. End quote. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verse 3. Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes, for the present time, the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter, and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation. Yes, life is full of tribulation, even wickedness. But we can bring to pass much righteousness, for the power is in us. See verses 27 and 28. Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves. And inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. See also Saints, Volume 1, pages 127 through 133. Polly Knight was sick when she and the Colesville Saints settled on Lehman Copley's land. The farm had more than 700 acres of choice ground, offering enough space for many families to build homes, barns, and shops. Here the Knights could start over and practice their new faith in peace, although many worried that Polly would not be long with them. Polly's husband and sons worked quickly, making fences and planting fields to improve the land. Joseph and Bishop Partridge also encouraged the Colesville Saints to consecrate their property according to the law of the Lord. After the settlement started taking shape, however, Lehman withdrew from the church and told the Colesville Saints to get off his property. With nowhere else to go, the evicted saints asked Joseph to seek the Lord's direction for them. You shall take your journey into the regions westward, the Lord told them, unto the land of Missouri. Now that they knew Zion would be in Missouri, not Ohio, the Colesville Saints realized they would be among the first church members to settle there. They began to prepare for the journey, and about two weeks after the revelation, Polly and the rest of the branch left the Kirtland area and boarded riverboats that would take them west. As Polly and her family floated down the river, her greatest desire was to set foot in Zion before she died. She was fifty-five years old, and her health was failing. Her son Newell had already gone ashore to buy lumber for a coffin in case she died before getting to Missouri. But Polly was determined to be buried nowhere else but in Zion. Shortly after the Colesville Saints left, the Prophet, Sidney, and Edward Partridge set out for Missouri with several elders of the church. They traveled mostly on land, preaching the gospel along the way and talking about their hopes for Zion. Joseph spoke optimistically about the church in Independence. 
He told some of the elders that Oliver and the other missionaries were sure to have built up a strong branch of the church there, as they had in Kirtland. Some of the elders took it as a prophecy. As they neared Jackson County, the men admired the gently rolling prairie around them. With plenty of land for the saints to spread out, Missouri seemed like the ideal location for Zion. And Independence, with its proximity to a large river and Indian lands, could be the perfect place to gather God's covenant people. But when they reached the town, the elders were unimpressed by what they saw. Ezra Booth, a former minister who had joined the church after seeing Joseph heal a woman's paralyzed arm, thought the area looked dreary and undeveloped. It had a courthouse, a few stores, several log houses, and little else. The missionaries had baptized only a handful of people in the area, so the branch was not as strong as Joseph had expected. Feeling misled, Ezra and others began to question Joseph's prophetic gifts. Joseph was disappointed, too. Fayette and Kirtland were small villages, but Independence was little more than a backwater trading post. The town was a point of departure for trails going west, so it drew fur trappers and teamsters along with farmers and small businessmen. Joseph had known people in most of these trades all his life, but he found the men in Independence especially godless and rough. What's more, government agents in the town were suspicious of the missionaries and would likely make preaching to Indians difficult, if not impossible. Discouraged, he took his concerns to the Lord. When will the wilderness blossom as the rose, he asked. When will Zion be built up in her glory, and where will thy temple stand? On July 20th, six days after his arrival, Joseph's prayers were answered. This land, the Lord told him, is the land which I have appointed and consecrated for the gathering of the saints. They had no reason to look elsewhere. This is the land of promise, he declared, and the place for the city of Zion. The saints were to purchase as much of the available land as possible, build homes and plant fields, and on a bluff west of the courthouse they were to build a temple. Even after the Lord revealed His will for Zion, some saints remained skeptical about independence. Like Ezra Booth, Edward had expected to find a large branch of the church in the area. Instead, he and the saints were to build Zion in a town where people were wary of them and not at all interested in the restored gospel. As bishop of the church, he also understood that much of the responsibility for laying the foundation of Zion fell on his shoulders. To prepare the promised land for the saints, he would have to buy as much of it as possible to distribute as inheritances to those who came to Zion and kept the law of consecration. This meant that he would have to stay in Missouri and move his family permanently to Zion. Edward wanted to help establish Zion, but so much about the revelation, his new responsibilities, and the area troubled him. One day, as he inspected the land in and around Independence, he pointed out to Joseph that it was not as good as other land nearby. He was frustrated with the prophet and did not see how the saints could establish Zion there. I see it, Joseph testified, and it will be so. A few days later, the Lord again revealed his word to Joseph, Edward, and the other elders of the church. Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes for the present time the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter, and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation, he declared. For after much tribulation come the blessings. In the revelation, the Lord also chastened Edward's unbelief. If he repent not of his sins, he said of the bishop, let him take heed lest he fall. Behold, his mission is given unto him, and it shall not be given again. The warning humbled Edward. He asked the Lord to forgive his blindness of heart and told Joseph that he would stay in independence and prepare the land of Zion for the saints. Yet he still worried he was not up to the enormous task that lay ahead. I fear my station is above what I can perform to the acceptance of my heavenly Father, he confessed in a letter to Lydia. Pray for me that I may not fall. After three weeks of travel, Polly Knight arrived in Independence with the Colesville Saints. She stood feebly on the ground, grateful she had reached the land of Zion. Her body was rapidly failing, though, and two recent converts from the area brought her into their home so she could rest in relative comfort. 
As the knights searched the area for a place to settle, they found the countryside beautiful and pleasant, with rich land they could develop and farm. The people also seemed friendly, even though they were strangers. Unlike some of the elders from Kirtland, the Colesville members believed the saints could build Zion there. On August 2nd, the saints in Missouri assembled several miles west of Independence to begin work on the first house in Zion. Joseph and twelve men from the Colesville branch, who symbolically represented the tribes of Israel, laid the first log for the building. Sidney then dedicated the land of Zion for the gathering of the saints. The next day, on a plot west of the courthouse in Independence, Joseph carefully laid a single stone to mark the corner of the future temple. Someone then opened a Bible and read from the 87th Psalm, The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. A few days later, Polly died, praising the Lord for supporting her in her suffering. The prophet preached the funeral sermon, and her husband buried her body in a patch of woods not far from the temple site. She was the first saint laid to rest in Zion. The same day, Joseph received another revelation. Blessed, saith the Lord, are they who have come up unto this land with an eye single to my glory, according to my commandments. For those that live shall inherit the earth, and those that die shall rest from all their labors. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 1 through 5, verses 26 through 33, and verse 44 and section 59, verse 23. Blessings come according to God's timing and our diligence. The saints laid the foundation of Zion in Jackson County, Missouri, where they endured many trials. They surely hoped that during their lifetimes this area would blossom into a place where all the saints could gather. However, the saints were driven from Jackson County within a few years, and the Lord revealed that His people would have to, quote, Wait for a little season for the redemption of Zion. End quote. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 105, verse 9. Therefore, in consequence of the transgressions of my people, it is expedient in me that mine elders should wait for a little season for the redemption of Zion. As you study the following passages, look for reasons blessings may be withheld for a time. The questions below can help you ponder. Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 1 through 5, and section 59, verse 23. Hearken, O ye elders of my church, and give ear to my word, and learn of me what I will concerning you, and also concerning this land unto which I have sent you. For verily I say unto you, Blessed is he that keepeth my commandments, whether in life or in death. And he that is faithful in tribulation, the reward of the same is greater in the kingdom of heaven. Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes, for the present time, the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter, and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation. For after much tribulation come the blessings, wherefore the day cometh that ye shall be crowned with much glory. The hour is not yet, but is nigh at hand. Remember this, which I tell you before, that you may lay it to heart, and receive that which is to follow. But learn that he who doeth the works of righteousness shall receive his reward, even peace in this world, and eternal life in the world to come. What messages in these verses strengthen your ability to bear tribulation more patiently? What blessings have you received after tribulation? Why do you think some blessings come only after tribulation? Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 26 through 33. For behold, it is not meet that I should command in all things. For he that is compelled in all things, the same is a slothful and not a wise servant. Wherefore he receiveth no reward. Verily I say, Men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, 
wherein they are agents unto themselves. And inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. But he that doeth not anything until he is commanded, and receiveth a commandment with doubtful heart, and keepeth it with slothfulness, the same is damned. Who am I that made man, saith the Lord, that will hold him guiltless that obeys not my commandments? Who am I, saith the Lord, that have promised and have not fulfilled? I command, and men obey not. I revoke, and they receive not the blessing. Then they say in their hearts, This is not the work of the Lord, for his promises are not fulfilled. But woe unto such, for their reward lurketh beneath and not from above. What role does being anxiously engaged in a good cause play in the fulfillment of God's promises? What role does your obedience play? Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verse 44. And now verily I say concerning the residue of the elders of my church, the time has not yet come, for many years, for them to receive their inheritance in this land, except they desire it through the prayer of faith, only as it shall be appointed unto them of the Lord. What is the relationship between the prayer of faith and the Lord's will for us? Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, section heading. Who was Polly Knight? Polly Knight and her husband, Joseph Knight Sr., were some of the first believers in Joseph Smith's prophetic calling. Polly and Joseph gave vital support to the prophet in the work of translating the Book of Mormon. The Knight family left Colesville, New York, to gather with the saints in Ohio, and were later commanded to move to Jackson County, Missouri. As they traveled, Polly's health began to fade, but she was determined to see Zion before she died. She had been in Missouri only a few days when she passed away. See Saints, Volume 1, pages 127 through 128, and pages 132 through 33. Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, was received on the day of her passing, and verses 1 and 2 seem to refer specifically to her. Behold, blessed, saith the Lord, are they who have come up unto this land with an eye single to my glory, according to my commandments. For those that live shall inherit the earth, and those that die shall rest from all their labors, and their works shall follow them, and they shall receive a crown in the mansions of my Father, which I have prepared for them. Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verses 9 through 19. Keeping the Sabbath day holy brings temporal and spiritual blessings. After promising to bless the saints in Zion with commandments not a few, the Lord gave special emphasis to one commandment in particular, the command to honor His holy day. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verses 4 and 9. And they shall also be crowned with blessings from above, yea, and with commandments not a few, and with revelations in their time, they that are faithful and diligent before me. And that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. As you study Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verses 9 through 19, ponder why honoring the Sabbath would have been so important to these saints as they sought to build Zion. And that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. For verily, this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. Nevertheless, thy vows shall be offered up in righteousness on all days and at all times. But remember that on this, the Lord's day, Thou shalt offer thine oblations and thy sacraments unto the Most High, confessing thy sins unto thy brethren and before the Lord. And on this day thou shalt do none other thing, only let thy food be prepared with singleness of heart, that thy fasting may be perfect, 
or, in other words, that thy joy may be full. Verily, this is fasting and prayer, or, in other words, rejoicing and prayer. And inasmuch as ye do these things with thanksgiving, with cheerful hearts and countenances, not with much laughter, for this is sin, but with a glad heart and a cheerful countenance. Verily I say, that inasmuch as ye do this, the fullness of the earth is yours, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and that which climbeth upon the trees and walketh upon the earth. Yea, and the herb and the good things which come of the earth, whether for food or for raiment, or for houses or for barns, or for orchards, or for gardens, or for vineyards. Yea, all things which come of the earth in the season thereof are made for the benefit and the use of man, both to please the eye and to gladden the heart. Yea, for food and for raiment, for taste and for smell, to strengthen the body and to enliven the soul. You can also ponder questions like these. Am I using the Sabbath day the way the Lord intended? How does keeping the Sabbath day holy help me remain unspotted from the world? See verse 9. And that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon my holy day. What can I do to pay my devotions unto the Most High? See verse 10. For verily, this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors, and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. After reading the following verses, what are you inspired to do to more fully keep the Sabbath day holy? Genesis chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, and chapter 31, verses 13 and 16. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for a perpetual covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor, and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 13 through 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, 
and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Mark 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. John 20, verses 1 through 19. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down, and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head, and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And Acts 20 verse 7 And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. You might also benefit from one of the many videos or other resources about the Sabbath found at sabbath.churchofjesuschrist.org. See also Russell M. Nelson, The Sabbath is a Delight. Ensign or Leohona, May 2015. See also Bible Dictionary, Sabbath. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 58, Verses 26 through 29. Perhaps family members could make a list of some of the things they are anxiously engaged in. Are all of them good causes? Why does the Lord want us to do many things of our own free will? Ask each family member to think of what they can do this week to bring to pass much righteousness. Later they can report on what they did.
Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 42 and 43. What do family members feel when they read these verses? How could these verses help someone who needs to repent? Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verses 3 through 19. What might it mean to be crowned with commandments? See verse 4. As you read the commandments in verses 5 through 19, discuss the blessings you have received by obeying each of these commandments. You could also notice how words like joy, rejoicing, cheerful, and glad are used to describe the commandment to honor the Sabbath day. How can you make your Sabbath more joyful? Maybe your family could make a matching game with cards that depict things you can do to keep the Sabbath day holy. Doctrine and Covenants, section 59, verses 18 through 21. What can we do to confess God's hand in all things? See verse 21. Consider going for a walk, or looking at pictures, noticing things that please the eye and gladden the heart. See verse 18. You could take or draw pictures of what you find, and then talk about how you can show your gratitude for these things. How have we seen God's hand in our lives? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested song? Choose the right. Hymns number 239. Improving our teaching. Share scriptures. Give family members time to share scripture passages they have found in their personal study that are meaningful to them. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thank you.